Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India and Nepal lay foundation stone for construction of cross-border bridge. Pakistan will absolutely not default on debts despite floods, says Finance Minister. And UN condemns tragic and shameful year-long ban on Afghan girls' education. And now for all the details, senior officials of India and Nepal on Monday laid the foundation stone for the construction of a motorable cross-border bridge over the Mahakali River. Pushkar Singh Dhami, Chief Minister of India's Northern Uttarakhand State, took part in a special prayer ceremony before he laid the foundation stone on the Indian side of the border, while Dilendra Prasad Baru, Nepal's Minister for Industry, Commerce and Supplies, held a similar ceremony on the Nepali side. India and Nepal had signed a memorandum of understanding in February this year for the construction of the 110-meter-long bridge, which will be built with Indian grant assistance. It aims to enhance cross-border connectivity across the Mahakali River, where close people-to-people -people links exist between communities on both sides of the border. It will be the second motorable bridge on the India-Nepal border in Uttarakhand. <laughs> अन्य काम काम धंधे रोजगार सभी में एक तरह से अप्रत्याशित रूप से बढ़ोतरी होगी एकदम से बढ़ेगा वहीं मैं समझता हूं कि ये पुल दोनों देशों के लिए मैत्री के संबंधों को बढ़ाने के लिए भी बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होगा and in news from Pakistan, Pakistan will absolutely not default on debt obligations despite catastrophic floods, the country's finance minister, Miftah Ismail, said on Sunday, signaling there would be no major deviation from reforms designed to stabilize a struggling economy. The South Asian nation was able to bring an IMF fund program back on track after months of delay. But the positive sentiment was short-lived before the catastrophic rainfall hit. Pakistan will absolutely not default on debt obligations despite catastrophic floods, Finance Minister Mifta Ismail said on Sunday, signaling there would be no major deviation from reforms designed to stabilize a struggling economy. Floods have affected 33 million Pakistanis, inflicted billions of dollars in damage and killed over 1,500 people, creating concern that Pakistan will not be able to meet debts. In an interview to Reuters news agency, Miftah said, the path to stability was narrow given the challenging environment and it has become narrower still. But if we continue to take prudent decisions, and we will, then we are not going to default, absolutely not. Smile said external financing sources were secured, including over 400 billion US dollars from the Asian Development Bank, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and World Bank. Pakistan was able to bring an IMF International Monetary Fund program back on track after months of delay thanks to tough policy decisions including record hike in petrol prices and taxes. But the positive sentiment was short-lived before the catastrophic rainfall hit. Central bank reserves now stand at 8.6 billion US dollars despite the influx of 1.12 billion US dollars in IMF funding in late August, which are only enough for about a month of imports. Amid the economic crisis and ongoing flood situation, vegetable and fruit prices have soared in markets across Pakistan as devastating rains have ruined crops and disrupted supplies. Moving on, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and PMLN Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif held a meeting in London on Sunday and agreed to hold the general elections at a stipulated time and said no pressure in this regard will be accepted. This comes as opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan has been repeatedly demanding snap polls. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif and ruling PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif on Sunday held a meeting in London and agreed on holding the next general elections at the stipulated time, according to local media reports. 
Shahbaz reached the United Kingdom on Saturday to attend the state funeral of late Queen Elizabeth. The Sharif brothers agreed that the present coalition government will complete its constitutional term and agreed to steer the country out of multiple crises with the help of allies. The Premier said at present the federal government was focused on rehabilitating the flood victims and improving the economy and will not accept any pressure in this regard. Meanwhile, opposition Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf PTI chairman Imran Khan, who has repeatedly demanded snap elections, said that he cannot wait any further and will call on the public if his demands were not met. Earlier this month, Khan had lashed out at the government, saying that it was delaying the elections to appoint an army chief of its own and that if a patriotic chief of army staff comes in, he will not spare the incumbent rulers. His remarks were construed by the military as defamatory and an attempt to undermine the army's leadership. Defence Minister Khwaja Asif told reporters on Sunday that the appointment should not be politicised as it hurts the institution. He said a new army chief will be appointed on time in November and accused Imran Khan of raking up a controversy for his personal benefit. And well, in news from Afghanistan, the United Nations has called for Afghanistan's Taliban rulers to reopen schools for girls, calling the anniversary of their exclusion from high school shameful. Weeks after the Taliban seized power in August last year, the hardline Islamist reopened high school for boys but banned secondary school girls from attending classes. The United Nations urged the Taliban on Sunday to reopen high schools for girls across Afghanistan, condemning the ban that began exactly a year ago as tragic and shameful. Weeks after the Taliban seized power in August last year, the hardline Islamists reopened high schools for boys on September 18, 2021, but banned secondary school girls for attending classes. Months later, on March 23, the Education Ministry opened secondary schools for girls, but within hours, the Taliban leadership ordered them shut again. Since then, more than a million teenage girls have been deprived of education across the country, the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan said. UN Chief Antonio Guterres tweeted on Sunday that they lost a year of knowledge and opportunity that they will never get back. He said girls belong in school and the Taliban must let them back in. The UN estimates more than one million girls have been barred from attending high school over the past year. The international community has made ensuring human rights, especially rights of girls and women, as key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets, which have remained frozen due to sanctions, have severely hampered banking, business and development. And more news from Afghanistan, hundreds of Afghans recently staged a demonstration against the U.S. decision to transfer 3.5 billion U.S. dollars in Afghan central bank assets into a Swiss-based trust fund that will be shielded from the Taliban. Washington has said the funds will be used to help stabilize Afghanistan's collapsed economy. However, the protesters blamed the withholding of funds by the United States has led to the ongoing crisis. Hundreds of Afghans gathered in front of the former Office of Afghanistan Human Rights Commission in capital Kabul this past weekend to protest the U.S. decision to transfer 3.5 billion U.S. dollars in Afghan central bank assets into a new Swiss-based trust fund that will be shielded from the Taliban. The U.S. Treasury Department has said the funds will be used to help stabilize Afghanistan's collapsed economy. Chanting anti-U.S. slogans, the protesters in Kabul, however, blamed Washington for the ongoing humanitarian and economic crisis, as it has withheld Afghan assets for so long, they said. They demanded the immediate full release of central bank reserves that have remained frozen since the Taliban took over last year. The protesters also called for trial of international troops accused of committing war crimes. The ruling Taliban's Foreign Affairs Ministry spokesperson last week termed the U.S. move against the international norms and said if the reserves are dispersed without taking into consideration the inputs by Afghanistan, the Islamic Emirate will be forced to impose fines and ban on such illegal activities. 
And in news from Nepal, scores of fans of pop culture gathered for the cosplay fest Otaku Jatra in Nepal's capital Kathmandu this past weekend and showed off costumes of their favorite animated characters. The annual cosplay festival started in 2010 and has been growing over the years. Hundreds of people gathered for a comic and fantasy festival in Nepal's capital Kathmandu this past weekend to celebrate Otaku Jatra or Anim festival. The annual festival was held for the second time this year. Pop culture fans dressed up as their favorite animated characters during the one day fest. Cosplay which originated in Japan is a combination of the words costume and play. It is an activity and performance art where participants wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent mostly a fictional character seen in anime. Most of the youngsters, especially the millennials and Generation Z, reaching adulthood in the second decade of the 21st century, are fond of the animated characters which drove them to the event despite rainfall. I've been watching anime since I was in grade 8 and now I am in bachelor second year. I have been watching anime since like a kid. Uh, it's fun to watch and time passes fun here but it has become like a habit of watching anime. It just brings joy in my life. The cosplay festival Otaku Jatra started in 2010 and has been growing over the years, bringing together pop culture elements such as anime and comic. It is popular among all genders and it is not unusual to see crossplay, also referred to as gender bending during such festivals across the world. In an attempt to boost tourism, a fishing competition was organized in Pehelgaum district of India's Daman Kashmir territory on Sunday. The Kashmir Valley is also known as Angler's Paradise and is famous worldwide for the trout fish, which attracts a large number of angling lovers. In a bid to promote sports and tourism, a fishing competition was organized in Pahalgam district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory by Kashmir's Anglers Federation in collaboration with the Tourism and Fisheries Department. Kashmir Valley, also known as Anglers Paradise, is famous worldwide for trout fish, which attracts a large number of angling lovers from across the world. The competition aimed to revive angling activities to attract a number of good anglers, including youngsters. So, as far as the adventure sports in, is concerned in Kashmir, it has great potential for all the segments. When you talk about fly fishing in Kashmir, it's called as Angler's Paradise. Here we have about 100 beaches, beaches, surrounded by beautiful mountains. We have got brown trout here, we have got rainbow trout here and it's full of stock everywhere. For the last few years, the Department of Fisheries is also making efforts to boost the trout fish culture and spreading the seeds in different farms, aimed to maintain the importance of trout fish that is a major attraction for anglers. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India and Nepal lay foundation stone for construction of cross-border bridge. Pakistan will absolutely not default on debts despite floods, says Finance Minister. And UN condemns tragic and shameful year-long ban on Afghan girls' education. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.